You know the drill. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. If you hit the bell, you'll get notifications. And don't forget to share this with your friends. Fat puppy here. And um, I literally tripped over this next video that you're about to see. That is a really big oak tree and it is covered with ferns. Ferns actually growing into the tree. Um, so I was out here yesterday morning just taking pictures of this tree when I tripped over something that I'm about to show you and this is what got the story started. As I was taking pictures of this magnificent tree I bumped into the stone right here and almost tripped over this flag. Now, I don't know if you can see that or not but that's a thin blue line flag in black. The first thing I thought was a police officer has been killed. The stone is hard to read. It's washed out and it's white. But I got as much information as I could off the gentleman's name. And then I went to work. I went to doing research to try to find out who this guy was and what happened that put him in the ground. His name is William Alva Clyde, the son of a Methodist minister. In the newspapers, he is referred to as W.A. Clyde. I'm sorry, Officer W.A. Cloud. Officer Clyde had two children. His wife's name was Georgia. His children's name, the oldest one was Liddy, and the youngest one was Mary. Liddy was born in 1902. Mary was born in 1905. Let's talk about Tony Moses. Tony Moses was born in 1880, and he was trouble. Always trouble. Always in trouble with the law. Always in trouble with the people around him. He had no respect for other people. He had no respect for himself, and he had no respect for the law. And now to get on with the story. It was late 1907. Tony Moses was at the train station. Tony Moses was cussing. and was just making a general ruckus and disturbing the peace. Officer Clyde was sent to take care of it. Clyde approached him. Moses argued with him, cussed him, and started to put up a fight. Officer Clyde pulled his stick out and went to wailing on him, or at least trying to, but Tony Moses took the stick from him. At this point, Officer Clyde pulled his gun out and shot Tony Moses in the foot. Obviously, he wasn't trying to kill him, or it may have been just the only shot he could get. Tony Moses went to the chain gang, and he was in the chain gang two months. But after two months, he'd had enough, and he escaped. He ran. He ran from the law. The people in the community didn't like him. The law didn't like him. A tip finally came in in early 1908, and... Officer Clyde was sent to handle it. It's Officer Clyde and a constable. They went knocking on the door. Actually, Clyde knocked on the front door. The constable went around the back and they both come in the house. And Officer Clyde found Tony Moses hiding in the bedroom underneath the bed. When he told him to come out, Tony Moses had a shotgun. He raised it up to him and shot him in the gut. Officer Clyde was gut shot. He was shot with a shotgun. A gut shot is the most painful way to be shot, and it's a very painful death. Officer Clyde died, I think it was two hours later, it might have been four hours later, uh, at a house with the doctors trying to treat him. It was a not a long, but a very painful death. So a manhunt was on the way, and they tried everywhere to find Mr. Tony Moses, but they could not find him. He was good at running. Calls came in from all over the state and as far away as Florida and I think Tennessee. The police department here in Sumter raised $250 for a reward. I read these newspaper clippings and places would call and they'd say, we think we got your man, be sure to bring someone to identify him, and $250. Apparently back then you could collect a reward even if you were the law. Finally, almost a year later, October 1909, Tony Moses was caught in Wilmington, North Carolina. A man who knew him was sent to identify him, and it was for sure him. And that's the last I heard of Tony Moses. I have looked everywhere. Uh, even seen an article in a newspaper from about a year later where people were still looking for him, and apparently Sumter was too. I'm thinking he must have escaped. So 
This is the second time he escaped from the officers of the law. And I can find no trace or nothing that says he was ever captured and brought to justice. I looked at newspapers. I even looked at a website that went over the case and said that as far as it is known, Tony Moses was never caught. So as far as we know of, of any record that I can find, and they might have been some shoddy record keeping back then, I can't find where Mr. Moses was ever brought to justice. But I also spoke of um, a compound tragedy. And the tragedy was actually several fold. First off, less than a month before Officer Clyde was shot and killed, he buried his two-year-old daughter, Mary. She had been burned up in a fire. It's really sad. Then, about six years later, Miss Georgia Clyde, who I heard remarried, but I don't have any evidence of that, died. She died, give me just a second here, in 1914, August 11th, 1914, she and the baby and Officer Clyde were all buried right here at this stone. Liddy, the oldest daughter, went to live with her Uncle James, who was her dad's younger brother, in Georgetown, South Carolina. This was in 1915. I've seen the guardianship papers where she went there. Then, in the 19, early 1920s, I see where she went to Roper, hospital medical school for nurses in charleston south carolina she eventually then for a very short time she really didn't stay a nurse all the reports i've seen census reports and such show that she was a homemaker she ended up marrying a gentleman by the name of frank edward condon who died um, in 1960 at the age of 65 she died in 1977, and she was buried at St. Lawrence Cemetery in Charleston, South Carolina. That I can find, she had two children. Hazel was born in 1928, married a man whose last name was Roberts, so her name was Hazel Roberts, and she died in the year 2002. Frank Condon Jr., I can't really find much about him other than he was born in 1933.